All right, so we are reviewing for quiz number seven, okay? Um, so by now, uh, after this quiz, I'm supposed to drop one, but remember, I dropped one early, right? So I'm not going to drop one. It's already been dropped, okay? So the next one will happen once we do the next six, okay? So we'll get, we'll get a drop again after the next six. So we're going to be simplifying. Now, there's two basic ideas uh, for this quiz. Some of it is going to be radicals, uh, where we're working them up by dividing, okay, uh, and multiplying. And then the other part of the test, the backside, is going to be like changing them from radical to exponent powers or exponent powers into radicals, so the stuff we did uh, on Friday, okay? So let's start off with this. Remember... The main idea of these problems is to remember the following property, okay? Radical x over radical, let's say, y can be rewritten as radical x over y. Or backwards. If you have one big um, uh, radical, you can break it up into two small parts, okay? Or if you have two small radicals in a fraction, you can put them together uh, into one big piece, okay? So notice, number one, I have radical 6 divided by radical 2. So what I'm going to try to do is see if I can kind of put them together. Okay? So I'm going to write it as radical 6 over 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so that actually worked out nicely. Radical 3. Can I do anything with that? Like, remember, my whole point of this exercise was to remove the square roots from the bottom, right? Did I do that? Is it gone? Yeah, so I'm done. By the way, if my answer would have come out to square root of 4, I would expect you to write 2 as your answer, but it didn't in this case. Okay, but um, always ask yourself, can I do more with this? Square root of 3 is as simple as it gets, so that's it. Notice I don't have any uh, square roots in the denominator, so perfect. There's actually no denominator left, so that's perfect. All right, so there you go. There's one example, but again, this is... What you guys have to remember, okay? Not only that, but I'll, I'll put a little star there. The other thing you're going to have to remember is conjugates, but we'll get to that in a bit. Okay? But this will be another thing for you guys to kind of remember. It's going to be your conjugates. But we'll do that, I think, in example four. So let's move on. All right. Now, for this one, I see 6 over 2. I can reduce that, so let me go ahead and do that. I'll reduce 6 over 2. That becomes a 3 over 1. Okay, so let me just rewrite this really quick before I do anything with the radicals, if I can. Uh, 1 radical 5, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Will it benefit me to get radical 3 and radical 5 and write them as the square root of 3 fifths? Does that help me at all? No, because I can't divide them, right? So, since that doesn't help me, i got to get rid of that denominator because it has a radical in there. So remember, you're going to multiply by radical 5 over radical 5. And I'll just multiply. Remember, the radicals multiply the radicals. The radicals do not multiply the numbers in the front and change stuff, right? So the 3 in the front is going to just stay a 3. But radical 3 times radical 5 is radical 15. On the bottom, radical 5 times radical 5 is radical 25. So I'll just uh, fix the bottom portion, because square root of 25 is 5. And uh, the square root of 15, can I do anything with that? No, because uh, what are the factors of 15? 1 and 15, 3 and 5, and none of those have nice square roots. So, so we're done. This problem's done. I mean, I'm hoping this quiz is easy for you guys because it's not making you do a lot of hard stuff. I mean, example four might be a little bit more challenging, example three maybe, but other than that, the, the rest of the problems are pretty easy, I, I hope. I hope they're not too bad for you guys. So this one looks like it could be a little bit more difficult, but I mean, we'll, we'll take it as, as we go. Let's see what happens. So I have the square root of 5 plus the square root of 3 over the square root of 10. I could break it up into two different fractions and stuff, but let's just kind of go with what most people are going to do. 
most people are going to say, well, since it's too many things up on top, let me just multiply top and bottom by the square root of 10. That way I can get rid of that denominator. So here we go. The square root of 10 is going to multiply the square root of 5. So that's going to be the square root of 50. Plus the square root of 10 is going to multiply the square root of 3. So that's the square root of 30. And then on the bottom, radical 10, right? Square root of 10 times square root of 10 is square root of 100. So let's start breaking this apart. All right, square root of 50. Uh, what two numbers give me 50? 25 and 2. And 25 has a nice square root, so I'm going to go ahead and write that. 25 times 2. Are there any good numbers that give me the square root for 30? Let's see, 1 and 30. 3 and 10, not good. 6 and 5, not good. So nothing really works. There is no um, set of numbers that multiply to 30 that have a square root. So we're just going to leave it like that. And the square root of 100, we should know that. That's 10. All right. Uh, the square root of 25 times 2, 25 goes out and it becomes a what? A 5. So this is going to become 5 radical 2 plus radical 30 over 10, and that's it. If you go to Mathway, it might show it to you in terms of two fractions, but uh, just leave it like this. This, You know, it's funny. I don't know if you guys know, but um, teachers can tell when you guys use Mathway. Like when we factor a trinomial, Mathway factors by grouping. We don't really teach by grouping much. So when you guys give me all the work by grouping, I know you're using Mathway, right? I know Mathway will write this in two different fractions. I would never do that, okay? So I saw I know people are using Mathway, right? Um, when you guys use Mathway, if you're going to use it, right, be smart about it. Look to see how far, what your teacher normally teaches, right? Make sure it makes sense because if not, when you write it out, we know. We know because we're like, wait a minute, I didn't teach you guys this technique. Um, so that's why, you know, using that stuff, it's good to help you, but not always good just to take the answers for what they are. All right, this is probably going to be the hardest type of problem on your quiz. I think there's either one or two of them. I can't remember. I know there's one for sure, or else I would have not written one out. Um, this is the one where you need to do conjugates, okay? So you notice your denominator has a radical in it, but it's being added by 3, right? So 3 plus radical 3. So the only way you can get rid of these things is to multiply by conjugate. Now, conjugate is basically the same thing that you see. Okay, so I'm going to kind of write it out the same way. But the only thing we change is the sign, right? So instead of a plus on the bottom, I'm going to put a minus. And then this is kind of where it gets a little messy because we're going to do a lot of multiplication. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in parentheses as well, just to kind of keep things in order. All right, so let's start. 2 times 3, that's 6. 2 times negative radical 3 is negative 2 radical 3. All right, so that's this part right here. Now let me erase those lines. Radical 3 times 3 is positive 3 radical 3. And radical 3 times negative radical 3 is negative radical 9. Again, I'm, I'm showing some extra steps. If you want to work this faster, please feel free to do so. Um, all right. Done with the top. Let's do the bottoms. 3 times 3, 9. And then 3 times negative radical 3 is negative 3 radical 3. And then radical 3 times 3 is positive 3 radical 3. And radical 3 times negative radical 3 is negative radical 9. Now, I told you guys something. If you do the conjugate right, so on the bottom part, if you do the conjugate right, what's supposed to happen? The middles cancel out. And do my middles cancel out? Yeah, on the bottom, these are gone. Okay? So that means I did that right, at least on the bottom. The top part, well, we can't really tell because it doesn't mean stuff's going to cancel. But we'll, we'll keep working. Okay, I got 6. Negative 2 radical 3 plus 3 radical 3. So that's negative 2 plus 3. That's 1. So it's plus radical 3 
minus the square root of 9, that's 3. Okay? And then on the bottom, I got 9 minus the square root of 9, which is 3. Let me clean it up, and then we're done. So 6 minus 3, that's 3, plus radical 3 over 6. I'm okay if you guys leave your answer like this. I actually would prefer it. Uh, if you want to write it as half plus 1 6 radical 3, you can. You can, you can split it up into two fractions, but... Again, it's not necessary. It's not going to help the problem any. So just leave it there. Okay? I don't normally make you guys take extra steps unless it's helpful. Okay? Um, it's not going to be helpful for me to split up this fraction. Like, it's just going to make more of a mess. So why am I going to do that? Okay? So just leave it like that. So on the first four examples, you guys have any questions on the first four? Because the next four are going to go by really fast. If you guys remember the homework from Friday, what did it take you? I think I saw someone finish it in three minutes. Okay. And the funny part was that my fastest student, she, the, the girl who finished early, was sitting next to my fastest student. And when she finished first, my fastest student looked over like, what the heck? Like, because she's used to finishing first all the time. Um, so, yeah, it, it, hopefully it was pretty easy. Because um, everybody was pretty much finishing immediately. So, um, but we're good. First four problems. Again, I'll send these out for those of you guys that showed up a little late. Uh, they'll be they'll be out there. So here we go. So five and six. These are both writing into radical form. Okay. So we're going from uh, an exponential power uh, that's a fraction. Okay. So a power that's a fraction. I want to write it into radicals. Now, just to remind you guys, the stuff you guys need to know for this, let me put it up here, looks like this. So radical x, this is i to the p is equal to x to the p over i. It goes in both directions, okay? So right now we're going from right to left. We're, we're given something with a a power that's a fraction, and I want you to write it as a radical. So we're going from the right side, x to the p over i, to the left side. Okay, the ith root of x to the power of p. Remember, the equal sign works both ways. Left to right, right to left. So, number five, using this definition. Um, remember what I told you guys when you do these problems, just write a radical. Whatever is inside the parenthesis, you put it inside the radical. And then uh, what do I put as my index? A 3. And then my power then has to be the 4. And that's it. You're done. Okay. For number 6, I'm going to put a radical. Put the 2n on the inside, right? Whatever is inside the parenthesis goes inside the radical. And then uh, what do I put for my index? A 2, but do I have to write it? No, because it's a square root, right? And then this will be a 3. Now, if you do write the 2, it's okay. But usually most people don't. Because it's a square root, I don't need it. All right? Now, remember, that property that I just put up here, we're going to use it for the next two problems, and then we're done. Let me... Let me put it up here again, just to, as a way to remind you. So we're going from exponential, uh, sorry, from radical to exponential. So number seven, I, I wrote that out there just to be a little tricky with it, okay? So remember, the square root of 2p, the thing inside of the radical goes inside of the parentheses. Right? What's inside stays inside. Just remember that. So 2p is in the parentheses. Um, what is my fraction? One half. Yeah, it's one half. Because the, the power, even though we don't see it, the power is a 1. That's why they didn't write it. And the index is a 2. That's why they didn't write that one. Okay? So your power is going to be a 1 half. So I would say that's as tricky as it gets on the quiz, like something like that, okay? Number eight, 
Well, the 3n is inside the radical, so the 3n goes inside the parentheses. My power is a 5, my index is a 4, so it's p over i, right? Power over index, so 5 over 4, and we're done. And this is your uh, quiz.